Distinctive features of Carnatic music, part eight. Significance of devotion. Welcome to the lecture series on Carnatic music. In this session, we will be discussing about significance of devotion in Carnatic music with reference to compositions of a few composers, namely Tirinyana Sambandar, Andar, Arunagiri Nadar, Annamacharya, Purandaradasa, Shama Shastri, Tyagaraja Swami, Mutta Swami Dikshitar. The speciality of Carnatic music is its high devotional element. The concept of the Carnatic compositions is set entirely against devotional outline. This music has evolved from the Vedas. Though it praises one God or the other, it is still not religious, but spiritual. The lyrics of the traditional Carnatic compositions, whether legendary or social in nature, are set exclusively touching the devotional or philosophical background. The beautiful interweaving of the devotional element and aesthetics has made it perpetual. Music and spirituality are inseparable elements. Spirituality has always been the prominent substance of Carnatic music. In reality, it has been told in Hindu scriptures that the easiest and the finest way to attain salvation is to sing the greatness of the divine power. It is also mentioned in these scriptures that music and God have always been together. Many deities have their own musical instruments and all are portrayed as lovers of music. Music has become the bridge that takes the listeners from sensual level to spiritual level. It is the vehicle by which a person tries to cross the bounds of worldly existence. Carnatic music is regarded as the means of divine contemplation and bliss. The striking blend of the raga and devotional element has made Carnatic music extraordinary. The basic idea behind Carnatic music compositions is to see and seek the ultimate God. This has been proved by many saints like Tyagaraja, Muttuswami Dikshitar, Shama Shastri, Annamacharya, Purandaradasa, etc. South Indian music primarily belonged to temples and gained its momentum from these devotees to the Lord. The significance of devotion in the compositions of each of these composers will be discussed now. While exploring the spiritual dimensions of Carnatic music, we can very well point out that it possesses a tremendous range of nuances and aesthetic values retaining the basic religious and spiritual core. Around the 7th and 8th centuries of the Common Era, South India saw a number of devotee poet singers, namely the Arvas and the Nayanmars, who, to a great extent, constructed the edifice upon which the later Carnatic music was built. The three great composers, St. Tyagaraja, Muttuswami Dikshitar and Shama Shastri, 
who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries were gems of their times which witnessed a very high religious fervor. These composers were primarily devotees in the first place and the role of the musicians comes only after that. They used their music as a form of worship where the lyrics pertained only to the glories of the God. Their music flowed spontaneously, had imposing lyrics and suited the theme, added emotion and matched their devotion. Each of these composers followed a highly individualistic style of music and lyrics, the common element being the devotional content. Tirikyana Sambandar Sambandar, also called Tiru Jnana Sambandar, Jnana Sambandar was a young Shaiva poet saint of Tamil Nadu who lived around the 7th century CE. According to the ancient texts, Sambandar was born to Shivapada Hridayar and his wife Bhagavatiyar who lived in Shirkari which is now in Tamil Nadu. When Sambandar was three years old, his parents took him to the Shiva temple where Shiva and his consort Parvati appeared before the child. His father saw drops of milk on the child's mouth and asked who had fed him, whereupon the boy pointed to the sky and responded with the song Todu Daya Sevan, the first verse of the Tevaram. In one of his Tevaram, Selva Nedumadam, Sendri Sennoki Selva, Madi Toya Selvam Uyargindra, Selvar Val Tillai Sitrambalam Meya, Selvan Kadalettum Selvam Selvame. Sambandar says that Tillai or Chidambaram has many rich, tall buildings that reach into the sky and touch the beautiful moon. It has various kinds of wealth. Many people with the wealth of wisdom live there. Shiva, who bestows eternal bliss, dwells in the Chitrambalam in Tillai. Worshipping his feet is the true wealth. All the hymns of Sambandar is of weighty devotional content. Andar The Tirupavai is considered to be one of the most important devotional compositions by Andar, a woman saint highly respected in the Tamil region. This work dates back to 8th century or earlier. Andal is known for her unwavering devotion towards Lord Vishnu. The theme of Tiruppavai is that the Lord must be thought of as the most adequate fulfillment of every power and faculty in us. If we think God as one, we should also think of this single or simple essence making itself available to each one in his or her own unique way. Arunagirinadar Arunagirinadar was a Tamil poet who lived during the 15th century in Tamil Nadu. He was the creator of Tirupugar, a book of poems in Tamil in praise of the Hindu god Murugan. The Tirupugar composed by him consisted of 16,000 songs of which only about 1,365 have been traced. His poems are known for their lyricism coupled with complex rhythmic structures. In Tirupugar, the literature and devotion are blended harmoniously. Tirupugar is one of the major works of medieval Tamil literature known for its poetical and musical qualities as well as for its religious, moral and philosophical content. 
The songs show the way of life of virtue and righteousness and set the tone for a new form of worship, the musical worship. In one of his Tirupugar, Sandadam Banda Todarale, Arunagiri Nadar exclaims that since he is constantly being chained to attachment, he is sad and weary. Instead, he is longing to chant Lord Muruga's name every day and always envisions his loving form in his mind. Anamacharya Anamacharya is a saint composer of the 15th century and is the earliest known Indian musician to compose songs called Sankirtanas in praise of Lord Venkateshwara, the deity of seven hills in Tirumala. Anamacharya considered his compositions as floral offerings to Bhagavan Govinda. He conceived his songs in the form of devotional poetry. Music was mainly an aid to render them effectively. In the poems, he praises Venkateshwara, describes his love for him, argues and quarrels with the Lord, confesses the devotee's failures and apprehensions, and surrenders himself to Venkateshwara. Traditionally, his songs are classified into Adhyatma and Sringara Sankirtanas. Adhyatma Sankirtanas affirm the primacy of spiritual values over the purely mundane and express inevitable tension between these and oneself. The Sringara Sankirtanas express love and longing for the Lord and his surrender to him. Here, Annamacharya speaks for himself and for others who like him long for God. In one of his Sankirtana, Nighama Nighamanta, Annamacharya describes poignantly his helplessness of getting entangled in this mundane world and rhetorically pleads the Lord to take him towards the path of devotion. Purandaradasa Purandara 1484 is one of the most prominent composers of Carnatic music who has made substantial contributions to sacred music. His compositions are generally known as Dasarnamas and are sung with reverence in all parts of South India. Purandara Dasa was the first of the Haridasas or servants of Sri Hari, also known as Vishnu or Krishna. All the Haridasas composed in Kannada, a language used primarily in Karnataka, but Purandara Dasa established the precedent of composing in the vernacular. All Haridasas were servants of God and their songs included the following messages. God is easily approachable by all. God is to be praised and constantly remembered as our benefactor. Realizing the true nature of God's benevolence towards us and offering simple worship within the means available to one is more acceptable to him than ritualistic or pompous ornamentation without mental participation. 
The verses he sang on a variety of themes were his own compositions. Some of them described Shri Krishna's adventures in this world. Some others sang about God's kindness to man. A few more verses were simple compositions expounding the philosophy contained in the Vedas, Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita in simple words. In yet another verse, Purandara Dasa praises Lord Krishna affectionately. In some verses, Purandara Dasa has even made fun of the Lord. His songs, which preached surrender to Vithala, have an elusive fragrance, poetic fervor, extraordinary logic, and cutting satire. In one of his kriti, Inu Daya Bharade, in Ragam Kalyanavasantam, Purandara Dasa pleads to the Lord Hari, asking him to have mercy and forgive his sins. He goes to the divine extent of saying that his life itself belongs to the Lord. <laughs> Shama Shastri Shama Shastri 1762 was a more emotional composer. His lyrics are in simple language form. They show a state of total surrender to the Supreme who is in the form of Divine Mother. He did not propagate any philosophical doctrines but his songs reflect an unparalleled degree of emotion and devotion. His compositions are a devotional stuff with a natural pathos and tenderness of a child crying out to reach its mother. He was an intensely pious person and his devotion to Sri Kamakshi was thoroughly genuine. He believed that he could converse directly with the goddess. Sri Kamakshi was to him a real living power who appeared before him more than once and blessed him. Shama Shastri was a Mahapurusha, a scholarly man. On sacred days, when he would sit for prayers in the peak of his devotion, tears would roll down his eyes. During those inspired moments, he lost all consciousness of mundane existence. At this time, he sang extempore many sweet, melodious songs which are always admired for their originality, richness of music and abundance of devotion. Tyagaraja Tyagaraja, 1767, was unique among these three composers. The Hindu epics include accounts of the various incarnations of Lord Vishnu. Tyagaraja's favorite was Rama, the hero of Ramayana. Tyagaraja sang in great bliss that he could constantly meditate on God and chant of his name. He considered worshipping God brought him happiness like no other thing in this world. The bliss of such a state cannot be described in words but can only be enjoyed. Tyagaraja sang several introspective songs in which he analyzed his own thoughts, feelings and strengths and weaknesses. He often wondered and worried 
if he lived to the expectations of God and whether he would ever reach a state where the Lord would be pleased with him. Some of the songs signify a state of utter despair where he pleads with God that however evil and unworthy he might be, the Lord has a duty to redeem the bad in the same manner he protects the good. No other composer had in such simple and appealing ways taught music as a means to salvation. In the songs of Tyagaraja, it is seen that he has brought forth the spiritual dimensions in the form of a dialogue where he converses with God and solicits divine response. Some of them are also in the form of discourses on God's glories, heightening the impermanence of human existence and worldly positions. The songs of Tyagaraja reflect the spiritual climate of the Vedas and the Upanishads and also the implied teachings of the epics and the Puranas. To Tyagaraja, one sure method of purging one's mind of all evil and of purifying the mind is through music, remembering God and reciting His glories. To him, music was not just a source of sweet sound, it was a means to reach God. Tyagaraja says categorically that those who do not understand music do not qualify for salvation. He goes to the extent of saying that music itself is a form of God. Tyagaraja has conveyed his love for music through his compositions. In his composition, Nada Lo Lude in Kalyana Vasantaragam, he explains that by becoming a lover of Nada or music, we can attain the eternal bliss and by involving ourselves entirely in music, our virtuous desires are fulfilled. Other composition, Raga Sudharasa in Andolika Ragam, he talks to the mind that drinking the essence of tasteful Raga gives the mind enjoyment and fruitfulness. Raga Sudharasa Palamuji Raja Sudha Rasa Padamuje Si Ramanji Udave Pumana Raja Sudha Mutta Swami Dikshita Among the Trinity, Mutta Swami Dikshita 1775 focused less on emotion. His compositions focused more on singing the glories of the Lord housed in various temples in South India. He visited numerous holy shrines and sang about every one of the deities. Some of his compositions described the appearance of the gods. Though he sang out of devotion, the lyrics do not convey devotional meaning. However, each of his composition is unique and brilliantly crafted and spirituality is the basic content of his whole music. 
His compositions are known for their depth and soulfulness of the melody. The priceless contributions of these composers have made Carnatic music a truly spiritual experience. The devotion for God is expressed through these compositions. Hence, when one listens to a concert, it is only natural to be moved by the music. Thus, music effortlessly brings together man and the divine power. In this session, we have discussed about the significance of devotion in Carnatic music, which is one of its distinctive feature. The next session will present another such feature. Thank you. Thank you.